Okay, here we have 9.6 graphing an absolute value equation of the form y equals a times the absolute value of x. So some things that I want you to understand is that when you're drawing the absolute value of x, it's important to know what that looks like. So what does y equal the absolute value of x look like all by itself? So when you plug in zero into this, like if I were to make a chart and you plug in zero, absolute value of zero is zero. So that's this point here. If you plug in negative one or positive one, the absolute value of negative one and the absolute value of positive one are both positive one. So I get this point here and this point here. The same with negative two and positive two. The absolute value of negative two and the absolute value of positive two are positive two. So you end up with these points here. And so what happens is it creates this V shape. It's essentially a line, but then all the negative values turn positive. So that's why it goes upward like this. So it should have been here. And then because all the Y values are now positive because of the absolute value, it shifts it so that it's up here now. Okay. So, and shift it, it reflects it so that it's up there now. It's important that I use the correct words because later on we are going to have to worry about reflecting and shifting. So it reflects it. It's like this is the mirror and it goes from all the points being over here and reflects it so that all the points are over here now. So this y value turned to positive 1, this y value turned to positive 2 in a regular line. Right? So if you notice, the center is zero. And I can find the center. So I'm going to say to find the center, um, you're going to set the inside of the absolute value bars equal to zero. And so that's what I have here by my little notes is to set the center, the inside, equal to zero. And then to get the points, once you know what this center value is, you just need two points to the left of that center and then two x values to the right of that center. And in order to find the y values, you just plug those numbers into whatever equation that you're given, okay? Um, and then when we graph it, when you graph it, it's going to be important on how you type that in the computer. So in the computer, if I were to try to graph this, I would have to first plot all of my points. Then I would have to pick a button that looks like a ray. So it doesn't have arrows on both sides. It only has arrows on one side. And to graph the ray on this side, I would select this center first, and then I would select this point next. And when I do that, it's going to draw the ray like this. Then I'm going to click the ray button again, and I'm going to click the center again, and then I'm going to go and click this point, and it will draw the ray going in that direction. Once you have both the rays from the center, then you can submit your answer. Okay, so for this particular problem, if I want to follow all of these steps, the first thing I need to do is take what is inside the absolute value and set it equal to zero. So in this case, I'm going to be setting x equal to zero. Now there's nothing to solve for here, so I know that the center is going to be zero. And then I'm going to pick two points to the left of zero. So think of a number line, right? Here's zero. Pick two values to the left and then two values to the right. So to the left of zero would be negative one and negative two. And to the right of zero would be positive one and positive two. And so then when I put in negative two, the absolute value of negative two is positive two times five is going to give me a positive 10. When I plug in negative 1, absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1, but times 5 will give me 5. 
When I plug in zero, the absolute value of zero is zero times five is zero. And for one, absolute value of one is, is one times five is five. And the absolute value of two is two, but times five is 10. So I'm doing this for each one. I'm just not writing it down because it's pretty straightforward. So I'm saying y equals five times, let's say negative two. And then I'm taking the absolute value of negative two, which is positive two, and then I'm multiplying that, and that's how I got 10. And I'm doing that for every single one of these x values, plugging them in, simplifying the absolute value first, and then multiplying the result times five to get that final answer. So I, I talked it out, but in case you're visual, I went ahead and wrote down at least one of them so you can see what I was saying. Now, once you have this table, you do have enough information to graph it. So once you have that table on your paper or maybe you did it in your head, you can start plotting. So start with the center, zero, zero, and then one, and one, two, three, four, five. And the second point here, it'll draw that ring. Hit the ray button again, start the center, and click on this top button. Actually, I think you can click on either of these buttons and it'll still draw the ray. But if you click this one, make sure your ray also goes through that point. Otherwise, that point is off or one of them is off. And if you choose to draw the ray starting at the center and then through this point, make sure that your ray actually goes through the other point as well. Okay, just to double check yourself, right? That's why I use two on each side versus just one on each side. Because if I happen to make a mistake on one of these, um, what will happen is, is my graph will be wrong and I wouldn't know it was wrong until too late and the computer told me it was wrong and then I got credit taken away, right? So it's good to have two so when you do try to draw the rays, if the rays don't go through both of those points on the right and both of the points on the left, then you know something's wrong and you can go fix it before you hit um, the submit button.